Good Friday afternoon to each and every one of you. Thank you for joining us today as we continue our walk through history. This past Tuesday, we read and, and walked through the text of Joshua chapter 1 with this great transition of leadership that has taken place within Israel from the Lord's servant Moses now to his assistant, uh, Joshua, the son of Nun. He has assumed leadership among the children of Israel, leading them as they take a second crack at entering into the promised land. We are going to read through Joshua chapter 2 today and look at this initial uh, step into the land where Joshua sends a couple of spies, to especially to check out Jericho. We want to see what happens with them as they go into Jericho. What happens with the, the harlot Rahab? Uh, what happens with her and how she handles they're, they're coming into the city, her response to them, what she believes about them and their God, and how that helps the story to progress as we continue to walk through history. This is not just history, we believe. We believe it to be history, but it's not just history. It's also God's story. It's his story of bringing about the Messiah to be the Redeemer of all mankind and the man Jesus Christ. This is certainly part of the story, and interesting enough, Alan, who is with me again uh, this afternoon, as always, Alan Steenstring, my good friend. Uh, it's good to see you, Alan. Uh, but it's interesting as we talk about this tie into Christ that Rahab is actually mentioned in one of the genealogies of Christ. I believe it's Matthew's account. She's she's mentioned there in that genealogy. Uh, but Alan, it's good to see you. How are you doing today? Hope that you're ready to talk about uh, an exciting text. Um, this is one of those, one of those kind of adventurous texts where there's a lot of things and there's a number of things going on that are exciting. There's a little bit of suspense, a little bit of thrill that takes place here. Uh, I'm sure that you have lots of juicy nuggets you're going to share with us today uh, from your study and prepar preparation for this text. Yeah, I'm excited. I hope it, hope we don't get too far into the weeds with some of our <laughs> some of our subjects here. But yeah, this one's there's just so much going on in this story, a lot more than we uh, we typically know, just based on right, right. You know, so many so many of these stories you remember growing up in you know Bible class, but you get the Cliff Notes versions a lot of times. And when you, or you focus on one these, specific thing and you miss everything else that's really good about the text. I mean, like Rahab, what do we know? She hid the spies and she's a harlot. That's that's all we know from the story. And those are just facts. I mean, the points of the story, the the nuances and the uh, the important point uh, parts of the story are so much more detailed and right. and interesting once you get into it. At you know, coming from in a, a more mature mindset than when you're four or five years old. So, right. so I'm excited to get into this one. Yeah. Looking at the text with mature eyes and, and making these connections. That's one of the things that we've really tried to do in this study is make connections with what we've already seen. And there are a number of echoes that, that show up here within this text, going back to the angels visiting Lot in Sodom and Gomorrah, a number of stories that involve women and some deception. We're going to talk about that. There's even, I think, an allusion here to the Passover that we're going to see uh, towards the end of this this chapter. We're excited to get, in, to get into that today. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to leave those below. We'll do our best to respond to them whenever we have a chance. Hope that you're having a great Friday. Hope you're looking forward to Sunday. But for now at this time, we want to get into Joshua chapter two. Again, thank you for being here. Hope you have a Bible. If you don't, don't worry. We have the text here on the screen and we're going to read it together and then walk through it together as well. Joshua chapter two and verse number one, Joshua, son of Nun, secretly sent two men as spies from the Acacia Grove, which is also the, the area of Shittim, saying, go and scout out the land, especially Jericho. So they left and came to the house of a prostitute named Rahab and stayed there. And the king of Jericho was told, look, some of the Israelite men have come here tonight to investigate the land. And then the king of Jericho sent word to Rahab, and said, bring out the men who came to you and entered your house, for they came to investigate the entire land. But the woman had taken the two men and hidden them. So she said, yes, the men did come to me, but I didn't know where they were from. At nightfall, when the city gate was about to close, the men went out, and I don't know where they were going. Chase after them quickly, and you can catch up with them. But she had hidden them up in the roof and hidden them uh, or she had taken them up to the roof and hidden them among the stalks of flax that she had arranged on the roof. And the men pursued them. This is the men of Jericho. The men of Jericho pursued them along the road to the fords of the Jordan. And as soon as they left to pursue them, 
the city gate was shut practice at that time that at nightfall the gates of the cities would be shut uh protective measures of course before the men verse number eight fell asleep she went up rahab went up on the roof and said to them i don't i, I know she says i know that the lord has given you this land and that the terror of you has fallen on us speaking of herself and, and the people of jericho and everyone who live in the land is panicking because of you for we know or so excuse me for we have heard how the lord dried up the water of the red sea before you excuse me before you when you came out of egypt and what you did to sihon and og the two amorite kings you completely destroyed across the jordan when we heard this we lost heart and everyone's courage failed because of you for the Lord your God is God in heaven above and on earth below. Now, please swear to me by the Lord that you will show kindness to my father's family because I showed kindness to you. Give me a sure sign that you will spare the lives of my father, mother, brothers, sisters, and all who belong to them and save us from death. The men answered her, we will give our lives for yours. If you don't report our mission, we will show kindness and faithfulness to you. When the Lord gives us the land and then she let them down by a rope through the window since she lived in a house that was built into the wall of the city. So she said, go to the hill country so that the men pursuing you won't find you hide there for three days until they return afterwards, go on your way. The men, the Israelite men, the spies said to her, we will be free from this oath. You made us swear unless when we enter the land, you tied this scarlet cord to the window through which you let us down bring your father mother brothers and all your family and brothers your father's family into your house if anyone goes out the doors of your house his death will be his own fault and we will be innocent but if anyone with you in the house should be harmed his death will be our fault and if you report our mission we are free from the oath you made us swear let it be as you say she replied and she sent them away now after they had gone she tied the scarlet cord to the window so the men went into the hill country and stayed there three days until the pursuers had returned. They searched all along the way, but did not find them. And then the men returned, came down from the hill country and crossed the Jordan. They went to Joshua, son of Nun, and reported everything that had happened to them. They told Joshua, the Lord has handed over the entire land to us. Everyone who lives in the land is also panicking because of us. There's a lot of suspense that, that's going on in this chapter, Alan. Uh, there's spies, there's there's treason of sorts, maybe, there's sabotage uh, that tries to take that, that is um, attempted here by the king of Jericho, and yet the Lord delivers the people. And there is a stark difference here, Alan, between this episode of spies going into the land of Canaan. And what happened back in the book of Exodus with those spies going in. Alan, what's the difference? And, and get us started here into the story of Joshua chapter 2 of the spies going into Jericho. Well, you have obviously a difference in number this time. Just the two spies. They they have a more, more limited mission to uh, scout the land, but especially Jericho. So I don't think they were uh, assigned to, you know, walk the distance of the entire land. I think they were uh, just in this general area to uh, to scout Jericho. And then I, I just find it, I always find it interesting what information we're given versus what we're not given. And in this story, the only name besides Joshua right at the beginning that we're given is Rahab. We don't even know the names of the spies, we, much less the name of the king of Jericho. We're just given their you know, positions and titles. So uh, obviously uh, Rahab is the, uh, the heroine, the, uh, the focus of, of this story here. And for, and for good reason, she, uh, she represents, uh, of course, she's, she's a non-Israelite. She represents, you know, all the people of Canaan, not just Jericho, but all the people there uh, when she talks about how they felt hearing about the Israelites coming. Uh, she talks about how their uh, their terror has fallen on the on the land. We are panicking. They had heard all the stories of what had happened across the Jordan with Sihon and Og, and uh, they lost heart. Their courage failed, 
And, and all this language, uh, we're talking about echoes that we see in this passage. There's multiple ones, but all of that language, I think, uh, reminds you, takes you back to, uh, I think, Kadesh Barnea, when the, the first group of spies was sent in. And it was at that point, it was the people of Israel that had these same feelings. Their terror had fallen over them and they were, they lost heart. Their courage failed at that moment because they heard about the people of the land. Well, now when they finally get to the land, it turns out that it was the people of the land, the Canaanites and the people of Jericho, like Rahab, they were the ones that were afraid this whole time, hearing about what, uh, what God had done for them. So, uh, so I think that's, that leads to a much better report from the spies when they go back, uh, which they, uh, they say, surely the Lord has handed over the entire land to us. Everyone who lives in the land is panicking because of us in verse 24. So, uh, so you have, like you mentioned, there's, uh, it starts off, there's all, all those echoes that remind you of that previous spy mission uh, should should throw up warning signs, but uh, you know it's kind of it's kind of a like you said it's a suspense thing, and then it actually turns out a little bit different this time around. Right, and my my echoes for those who maybe have not been with us in these studies, and you're not quite sure exactly what we're talking about. Echoes, all we're talking about is repeating themes, things that have already shown up in Scripture that continue to show themselves again. That's one of the emphasis that we've had here. <clears throat> Or emphases, I guess, that we've had here in, in this study of, of as we've been walking through the history of scripture, is we want to see how how things often repeat themselves, how this story that has this element to it, that same element is seen in, the, in another story down the line, and how these things show show up time and time again. And that's what we see as we're as we're getting in Joshua. We talked in our last study about how there's echoes there, about the reminding of of, uh, of Mo for Joshua of how he had promised Moses, God had promised Moses, how he would be with him. And now Joshua, I'm going to be with you in the same way. Um, we see echoes here as well. These echoes of, of spies and fear, uh, scouting out the land. And what, as you mentioned, there's a complete reversal here. The, the, the roles have reversed. Whereas in the first, first time the spies were scared, well, now the people are scared. Alan, why are the people scared? Uh, that, that's what I was thinking of. What's the difference? What's been the difference between between the first time and now here? What, what, what do you attribute that to, this difference here? Why the people of Canaan are scared as opposed to why maybe the, that's not mentioned in the first time and that the spies are, it's attributed to them of being fearful. Well, uh, Rahab mentions it. I mean, they, they'd heard everything at this point. It's been, uh, even though it's been 40 years since re the Red Sea, uh, I mean, she specifically details for, we heard how the Lord dried up the water of the Red Sea before you when you came out of Egypt. Well, that's, you know, that was, for, that was probably before she was born. I'm assuming she's kind of a younger woman. Um, you know, that could have been before she was born. And of course, the more recent history is, the defeat of these great kings, um, Sihon and Og, I can't even remember which one now, but I think it's Sihon was the one that's a descendant of these like giants. The Anakin. So he, uh, he obviously would have been uh, pretty well known in the area and probably a relative of many people uh, from that area if there's other giants in the land. So, uh, so for him to be defeated by this group that just came out of Egypt, you know, a bunch of slaves. Uh, obviously, there's something more going on here. And, and the fact that they were able to completely destroy them, um, you know, that's, those are strong, strong names, strong cities, strong, uh, strong kings, and Israelites laid waste to them. So, I mean, that wouldn't have gone unheard of. And, and obviously, they, it, I think what's most interesting about this is how much Rahab knows about the Lord, Yahweh, right. the God of Israel. Uh, I mean, that's, that's shocking. Like that's, uh, I can understand her hearing about the defeat of these Kings. Uh, you know, obviously a, 
you know, a soldier must, you know, you must have slipped through and gotten away, you know, a couple residents of the city, you know, might have slipped through and gotten away that would have been, and they would have, you know, ran away and told the, their, their neighbors and that would have spread, the news would have spread. I can see that happening, but, you know, where would they get this, uh, this understanding of, of the Lord and of the and, Lord, your God is God in yeah. heaven above on earth below. How? Mm -hmm. It's very interesting that she would know that not just because she's Cana, but the fact that she's a prostitute doesn't seem to be the most moral of all people. And yet she has this, this understanding of, of the Lord. And Alan, I want to tie in, um, I think where we first read of this, that this, this, that's taking place with Rahab was predicted by God. And it was said, it was said by God in Exodus chapter nine following or i guess just prior to the seventh plague against egypt uh, the lord said to moses and this is exodus 9 and verse 13 get up early in the morning and present yourself to pharaoh tell him this is what the lord the god of, it, of the hebrews says let my people go so they may worship me for the time i'm about to for this time i'm about to send all my plagues against you your officials and your people then you He's speaking to Pharaoh, you and your, your officials, your people will know that there is no one like me on the whole earth. But now I could have stretched, I could have stretched out my hand and struck you and your people with a plague and you would have been obliterated from the earth. However, however, I have let you live for this purpose to show my power and to make my name known on the whole earth and I actually have a little arrow pointed and I and I have written here in, in my margins Rahab knew what what is what what is taking place in Joshua 2 was done and she mentions that as well she mentions specifically the Red Sea being part of it even even before that the plagues everything that taken place was done so the Lord could show himself as being the Lord being the true God, the Egyptians, this is chapter seven and verse five, the Egyptians will know that I'm the Lord when I stretch out my hand against Egypt and bring out the Israelites among them, but not just the Egyptians, the whole earth, the whole earth would know, even Rahab, this prostitute in Jericho, decades later, she would know of the great power of the Lord, and she would be fearful. She finds these the spies, providentially find their way to her. She is, she believes in the power of God, and she hides them away, all because she has faith. It seems, and 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 and, it, and I want to want to make this point that it, we're not the ones that are trying to justify Rahab, and everything takes place in the story. We're not doing that. We're not having to do that because the scriptures have already done so. Hebrews thirteen and verse one speaks of of Rahab's faith. James chapter two. And verse 25 speaks, speaks of Rahab's faith. And I know so often when we come to this text, Alan, we get bogged down in, in the questions about, about, well, was it okay that Rahab deceived, deceived the king of Jericho? Does that mean that we have the right to deceive for good purposes? And, and I think in doing that, we're just we're missing the, the big point of that. I, I'm not going to come here and try to either justify Rahab or condemn Rahab. And I'm not coming here to try to justify or condemn myself. I'm going to let this text speak for itself. And the grander the scheme of scripture speak for itself that the Lord, the Lord commends Rahab for what happens here. Now, on what levels does he do so? We always want to go, well, does he specifically approve of the, of the deception? That's not my concern. That's not my concern. But the Lord includes her here and includes her in other places. And it is clearly seen to me that he approves of what she does here in helping the spies. But Alan, is this the only time that we see something like this taking place? You're talking about all the rest of the, all the rest of the women in the Bible. Yeah. We're talking about echoes, right? Echoes. These yeah. things continually show themselves come up. The, the echo here that I'm referring to is the, these continual instances of women deceiving bad men. Basically, if we go back to Genesis three, right? What's the issue there? The serpent, the bad character deceives the woman. Well, what we have a number of times following that are instances of women deceiving the bad character, a, a serpent-like figure. Do you, do you remember some of those, Alan? We talked about this a little bit before we came on. Uh, one thing, the first ones I remember uh, earlier in our study were the, the two midwives. Yes, uh, that, yes, that one definitely comes to mind. That Absolutely. Deceived, you know, deceived Pharaoh 
when he told them to, you know, get rid of all the baby boys at the beginning of Exodus. So, mm -hmm. and they were blessed because of what right. they did. So obviously, I mean, that was, that's a good example of, uh, you know, this, sometimes it's the result is ambiguous or the, uh, you know, did God approve or not is ambiguous. Well, that one clearly God approved of them not killing uh, those babies. And think about why it happened too. The, the ultimate end goal of it all was the preservation of the seed, the preservation of the lineage for the Christ to come mm -hmm. about. I certainly would think that that's a, it's a pretty, pretty important thing to happen in scripture. Yeah. And then even uh, farther on, I, I think of, uh, I think Micah or no, Michael, Michael. and David, mm -hmm. she deceived, she deceived Saul. Actually puts uh, him down through window trying to find him. Yep. Nope. Yeah. Window there too. So a yep. lot of, a lot of parallels there. Um, Esther, Esther and Haman. deceiving mm -hmm. Haman and preserving again, preserving the, the people of Israel, or the Jews. Um, you think, can you think of any more? I know there's uh, three or four others that you can kind of include. Yeah, Sarah with uh, Pharaoh and Abimelech. That's a couple more. Rebecca with Abimelech. Rachel with Laban. Uh, and I think you've got the other ones that that I have uh, I have written down here already. Uh, this just shows up time and time again. Now, what does that necessarily mean? I don't know. You can draw your own conclusions uh, wh why they're present and why this echo continues to to be seen in Scripture. Uh, but the result is clearly seen. The result is the preservation of the seed, the preservation for the promise of God to be fulfilled in the Messiah. Certainly coming out. And there are instances in this, in this list that we've given where it had a direct impact on whether or not the seed would continue on. Um, whenever it comes to, to David, that was, that was kind of a big deal, the carrying on of, of him, uh, the throne of David being established in Jesus. And while Esther with Haman, that was pretty, pretty direct. Uh, some of these instances with Sarah, Rebecca, and Rachel as well. Those are direct, directly tied into the, the Messianic seed. Um, just want to show here that, that these things might not be as, as cut and dry as we want to make them out to be. I know we, we really appreciate having black and white rules and things to follow. They certainly do make things easier to an extent. But I would just caution us in coming to texts like this and just drawing really strong black and white statements because I don't know if it's as black and white as, as we want to make it out to be, especially when we look to scripture and see Rahab here as being commended on multiple occasions. Again, Hebrews 13, 1, James 2, 25, for what she did, she is commended for it. And oh, by the way, Matthew 1 and verse 5, she's in the lineage of Christ as well. Um, I, I don't want to be anybody's condemner. I'm not going to be my justifier either. I will just say I appreciate the faith that Rahab shows here in the fact that she did provide safety for these men and sent them out so that they could get back to Joshua and they can make their conquest into the land. Yet she doesn't do so just, you know, kind of without without a price, you can say she she's doing this. I believe there there is obviously a an, an, a portion of faith that she has in God. Um but part of that faith is, is fear. She fears him and what he can do to Jericho. And she wants to, to save her family, which is why she says, you know, if, if I have shown you this kindness, would you please repay it by showing kindness and faithfulness to my family as well? Show mercy to us, spare my family, let us live, uh, which one more echo I have written down here. The text says that she had taken them up to the roof and hidden them among the stalks of flax. That takes my mind back to, to Moses where Jochebed puts Moses among the reeds and to hide him from those who, who sought to kill him. Um, but she, she asked that they be, they be spared because of what they've done. And the men said, we'll do that. Give some stipulations here. Don't snitch on us. Make sure you're in the house and put that scarlet that scarlet cord on the window, which I made, I made a mention earlier that there are some, possible Passover echoes here. That reminds me of the Passover. Alan, what, what happened with the Passover? How is that similar to what we have here within this text? The original and Passover, of course. Death was coming to them. And if they didn't, you know, didn't follow the God, God's command, they didn't put the blood on the door. Mm -hmm. Again, scarlet cord exactly. well, on the window, the you know, colors, color parallels are there. Then when they did that, then the 
death would pass over them. Mm -hmm. So same thing happening here. God is, uh, which it, this is happening at, at opposite ends of the wilderness, really. Uh, Passover was before crossing over the, the crossing the Red Sea. And then this is going to be before crossing the Jordan into the land. So, uh, so you have, if you're looking carefully, you know, the Israelites probably saw these parallels a lot better than we can today, but they would see that, oh, this is, uh, these are signs that we can, we can see that God is in control and God's faithfulness will, will continue. Right. The same signs that led to Rahab having a fear, a, a healthy fear of the Lord. Uh, they were the same signs that were to instill confidence and courage in the people as they went about making this conquest into the land. Remember from chapter one, be strong and courageous. Do not fear. Do not be discouraged. The Lord says, I'll be with you wherever you go. I'll provide for you. <laughs> and what a way, what a way to provide for the spies that they are sent into Jericho and they happen to just find their, their way into the house of a prostitute, which might raise questions in our mind to begin with on that. But nonetheless, they find their way into this particular woman's house and she has a, a healthy fear of the Lord, a faith in him. And she ends up providing safety for them so that they could go back. And instead of coming back with fear within themselves, which then spreads to fear among the people, they come back and speak of the fear of the people of Canaan, which instills confidence in the people that the Lord is going to provide for them as they make this conquest into Jericho, which we'll, we'll read in a few chapters. Chapter six, I believe, is Jericho. Again, one of, uh, one of probably our favorite stories growing up as kids, uh, the marching around the walls. We even sing the song, the, the Lord told Joshua to go to Jericho and march seven times around. That's one of my favorite songs. Kind of hard to song to sing because you got to hold those notes pretty, pretty long, <laughs> all the individual parts. Uh, but it, 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 is a, a, it is a powerful song that reminds us of the Lord's power and his provisions and of him keeping his promises. Alan, what do you have to close out our study today on this Friday? Well, one other kind of kind of echo that I see with this one is uh, is an echo back to Sodom and Gomorrah. Oh, yeah, and the story of the story of Lot. I mean, he was visited by two two visitors, you know, two mm -hmm. angels back then. He he protects them, he houses them, and then those uh, those visitors end up saving him and you know some of his family. So same thing happening here. Two visitors, uh, Rahab is, is Lot in this story, and she, she protects them. Well, at, if we extend that parallel, then that makes Jericho, and I think this Jericho is representative of all of the Canaanite, the wicked Canaanites and Amorites and all the other ites. Uh, that would parallel them with Sodom and Gomorrah, you know, that's, they're basically the rest of the Bible. If you're talking about the worst of the worst, you usually mention Sodom and Gomorrah. So if you're being compared to Sodom and Gomorrah in any way, then that's, that's not a good thing. So it's, it, it's kind of interesting. People will, people will take the book of Joshua and just the, all the conquests that happens and, you know, kind of, kind of, think that you know god is unjust and god is god is cruel he's conquering right. all these people well dig a little deeper at this we see the nature of these people here we've been told about them the iniquity of the amorites is not yet complete we've seen mm -hmm. that time and time again well it's finally complete here they've had hundreds and hundreds of years of iniquity that has gone unchecked and uh, and think about it here. It's not like they don't know anything. If, Ra if Rahab knows the, the name of the Lord and knows everything that's happened, don't you think that a big portion of the rest of Canaan knows about what's happened with the Red Sea and, and all, everything that the Lord has done for Israel? She's not the only one in the entire nation that knows this. Uh, it is obviously a widespread knowledge, mm -hmm. and yet she is the only one that is saved because of her faith. So that that tells you the the level of depravity in this in this city of Jericho in this entire uh, entire land, uh, and and I think it more than justifies the 
um, you know, the destruction that, you know, that God using Israel as his, uh, as his army uh, does for the entire you know, land of Canaan. And, and we see why that was necessary too, because when they don't completely destroy the peoples of the land, they, those people in turn drag them down. And we see that time and time again through the book of Judges. So, uh, so Rahab is, is a, you know, a, a diamond in the rough here. She's the needle in the haystack of a wicked haystack. And, um, yeah. and she is commended uh, commended to the point that, you know, obviously she makes it into the lineage of Jesus, which, you know, not too many people get that honor. So she obviously, um, obviously has faith here. She, uh, she obviously is a, a woman of, uh, a woman of faith and bravery to go against the, the king of Jer Jericho and go against her people. She cares about her, uh, her people. And then she's willing to, I think, uh, clearly she assimilates into if she marries into the line of judah and the the kingly line then she obviously uh you know there, there's a reason for that so she's she assimilates herself into the the nation later on in, in some way that we just don't know about so uh, so just a great uh, a great story we shouldn't get bogged down with any of the you know did rahab lie that kind of stuff that's really not the point of these stories um, or at least not the point of that story here. The point is to commend her for her, um, for someone that is uh, immature in, in knowledge of God. She shows a great maturity in her faith. So she's commended for it. And to add, <clears throat> excuse me, just add a little more umph to the point that you're making about the wickedness of the people. Consider something that we've already read and already highlighted in, in Deuteronomy chapter nine, uh, beginning in verse number one to listen, Israel, Deuteronomy 9 and verse one today, you are about to cross the Jordan to enter and drive out the nations greater and stronger than you with large cities fortified to the heavens. The people are strong and tall, the descendants of the Anakim, you know about them and you have heard it said about them who can stand up to the sons of Anak. But understand that today the Lord your God will cross over ahead of you as a consuming fire. He will devastate and, and subdue them before you, exactly what Rahab was scared of. You will drive them out and destroy them swiftly as the Lord has told you. And when the Lord your God drives them out before you, do not say to yourself, the Lord brought me in to take possession of this land because of my righteousness. Instead, the Lord will drive out these nations before you because of what? Their wickedness you are not going to take possession of this land because of your righteousness or your integrity and said the lord your god will drive out the nations before you because of their wickedness in order to fulfill the promise he swore to your fathers abraham isaac and jacob remember the lord is the lord of all nations he is the god over the entire earth and every every people are responsible to him their rebellion will be held to account and here we see that taking place Thank you for your great, great uh, insight there, Alan. I think we did it. Thank you did an excellent job of, of really highlighting some important places in this text. A couple of goofs that I had. Number one, the original um, failing to enter into the land. That's on Exodus. That's Numbers 13 and 14, I believe. I believe it's number 13, 14. And also the text in Hebrews that mentions uh, Rahab is not 13 and verse one. I don't know why I wrote that down. It's actually chapter 11 and chapter verse 11. 31. Hebrews 11 and verse 31. I just, I was thinking to myself, I was like, that doesn't sound right. 13 and verse one. I know she's in the hall of the hall of faith. And whenever you mentioned it, I was like, I'm going to go double check that. I'm pretty sure I messed that up. <laughs> but yes, uh, Hebrews 11 and 31 is where Rahab is mentioned in that great text. And then James two and verse 25. And of course, in the genealogy of Jesus, Matthew chapter one and verse number five. Alan, thank you so much again. Thank you so much for, for leading yeah, us thank in you. some great study, uh, getting us into a text that can be difficult. I hope that we've maybe shed some new light on this text to see how this actually kind of falls in line with some echoes that we've seen already in scripture and some things we're going to see later on in scripture to help us make sense of, of what can be a difficult text at times. If you have any questions about this, please reach out to us. Let us know if you have any questions, leave them in the comment section. We'll try to answer those best we can. Or if you want to send us a private message, you can do that on the Facebook page as well, or go to our website, which is armorofgodonline.com. You can Google search Pleasant Plains Church of Christ in Jackson, Tennessee. It should come up there and you can send us a message through the website. We appreciate you being with us today. Hope that God continues to bless you on this Friday afternoon. Hope you have a great weekend 
And if you're looking for some people to worship with, some saints to gather with on Sunday, we invite you to join us at the Pleasant Plains Church of Christ on Sunday morning at 9 a.m. We'll be worshiping together uh, at our church house. Uh, we'll have an hour of worship on Sunday morning. We'd love for you to join us there. If you have any questions about that, again, reach out to us, let us know. But we hope that you can worship with us if you're here in the area. Hope you all again have a great rest of your weekend. Look forward to studying again with you in Joshua on Tuesday afternoon. We'll continue to work our way through this text, the history of the Bible, uh, the story of God. Hope that's, that this has been beneficial to you. And we hope that will continue to be the case as we move forward. Alan, thank you again. Hope you have a great rest of your Friday. Hope you all have a great rest of your Friday. Take care. God bless. And we will see you all soon. Thank you.